In this presentation, the anterior approach for access to the ankle will be used. Three 7.3 mm cannulated screws will be inserted to fuse the joint. One screw will be placed anterolateral, one anteromedial, and one posteromedial. Following the completion of this exercise, you should understand the clinical indications and contraindications the anterior surgical approach to the ankle joint, the preparation of the joint surfaces prior to ankle fusion, the correction of the malalignment, and the placement of the 7.3 mm cannulated screws. Ankle fusion using cannulated screws is indicated in cases with ankle joint arthritis associated with extensive cartilage loss, ankle joint deformity that does not respond to bracing, and a history of failed conservative or surgical treatment. Contraindications include active infection, a poor vascular supply and or soft tissue envelope, advanced osteonecrosis of the talus, and a non-compliant patient. When an anterior approach is planned, the surgery is performed with the patient in a supine position. A support is placed under the calf. The patient is positioned so that the operative area can be visualized with the image intensifier. A sterile tourniquet can be used, but is not mandatory. The important landmarks include the tibialis anterior tendon and the EHL, which are palpated and marked. The incision will be made at least 4 to 5 cm proximal and at least 2 to 3 cm distal to the ankle mortise in the plane between these landmarks. The skin is incised. The anterior ankle joint has now been exposed. The extensor retinaculum, which runs in a band across the ankle, has been incised to expose the tibialis anterior and EHL tendons. The soft tissue retractor has been used to retract the tibialis anterior tendon medially and the EHL laterally. The ankle capsule is now visible. A rongeur can be used to remove soft tissue from the front of the ankle capsule in the majority of arthritic ankles, there are large osteophytes in the anterior ankle joint that block or obstruct the view into the joint. For this reason, it is typical to remove them with an osteotome or chisel. Once the anterior ankle mortise is exposed, any additional soft tissue adhesions can be freed giving mobility to the ankle. One or two lamina spreaders can be inserted into the ankle joint to distract and allow for visualization. A bone curette is now used to remove any remaining cartilage from the ankle joint, taking special care to clear the posterior aspect by working from posterior to anterior on both the talar and tibial surfaces. Once this is completed, the gutters can also be prepared, as well as the surface of the fibula and the lateral surface of the talus. The lamina spreader is repositioned from medial to lateral, which allows the medial gutter to be prepared. At this stage, a burr is used to correct any deformity and alignment in the tibiotalar joint and roughen the subchondral bone. The lamina spreader is repositioned during the joint preparation to allow adequate exposure to both sides of the joint for the burr. At this point, a chisel can be utilized to feather and further disrupt the subchondral bone bringing a good bleeding blood supply to the fusion surface.
The foot is positioned in neutral to slight dorsiflexion with 0 to 10 degrees of external rotation and neutral to 4 degrees of valgus. Once the foot is set in the appropriate position, three 7.3 mm cannulated screws will be placed. First, the guide wire for the anterolateral screw is inserted. The anteromedial guide wire is then inserted. A stab incision is made approximately 3 cm proximal to the ankle mortise to allow for insertion of the posteromedial screw. Spread the surrounding soft tissues to allow a protection sleeve to be inserted down to the surface of the bone, making sure to avoid the neurovascular bundle. Once the tissue protection sleeve has been introduced, the third guide wire can be inserted. The drill sleeve is removed. In a clinical situation, the position of the guide wires is confirmed with the image intensifier. The countersink is used to prepare a recess for the insertion of the posteromedial screw head. After the hole has been countersunk, the countersink and the tissue protector are removed. The screw length is determined with a direct measuring device. The anteromedial and anterolateral screw insertion sites are also countersunk. The appropriate length of the two anterior screws is determined. The posteromedial hole is prepared with the 5 mm drill bit through the tibia stopping at the talus. The 7.3 mm cannulated screw is inserted with the cannulated screwdriver. This procedure is repeated for the anteromedial and anterolateral screws. The guide wires are then removed. The x-rays show the final position of the screws. It can be seen that the ankle joint is solidly fused and that there is subtalar motion. On the bone model, the foam has been removed to show the final position of the screws from multiple views. You should now understand the clinical indications and contraindications, the anterior surgical approach to the ankle joint, the preparation of the joint surfaces prior to ankle fusion, the correction of the malalignment, and the placement of the 7.3 millimeter cannulated screws.